The presentation you're about to see was produced by AARP. It is intended to start vital conversations that will help you plan for and begin to cope with the difficult decisions required to care for a loved one at home, nearby, or long distance. There's no cookie cutter approach to caregiving. My father was born in the Philippines, strict disciplinarian. We were not allowed to talk back or reason with him. <laughs> there was no conversation inside the house. And so we thought at that time that because he was so strict, so regimented, so regulated, that we thought he didn't love us. Like all those who fought during World War II, being part of this greatest generation, he was not one to actually disclose those things, all those horrors of war. Tony Taguba's father was one of many brave Filipinos who fought behind Japanese lines. Four months before he died, it was it's almost like a confessional because I kept asking him, you know, what did you do? What happened to you? Then he said that, that he had fought as a guerrilla. Over 70 years, he kept it to himself. Like father, the son chose a military career. Tony retired from the army as a major general. By then, the father was the child. Dementia was just kicking in really bad. He was very combative, he was very argumentative. He'd wake up, he would take his clothes off, walk around naked. My parents lived in Hawaii, and we were spread from Arizona to Texas to Mobile, Alabama, and Virginia, which creates a lot of tension. Personally, uh, amongst my, my siblings, uh, with spouses, you know, uh, because now you have to worry about how much longer will the care take, what's going to happen to our jobs because we can only take so much leave time, uh, what's the impact on our children. There's a huge amount of tension. I mean, there are some downright arguments. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. I joined the School Sisters of Notre Dame in 1954. The spirit of the order was to help others. You helped people. They're God's people. In 1974, the sisters' work brought them into contact with the United Farm Workers, who were pushing for a national grape boycott. One of their leaders was a Filipino-American named Pete Velasco. Peter was sent to be the director of the boycott office in Baltimore. Just every week I took food, money, and clothes down. And if he needed a ride to Philadelphia, I took him. And working with Peter with what he was doing for poor people was very good for me. It made me happy. After a year, the nun went to her mother superior. I felt that I needed to leave the convent and marry Peter Velasco. 20 years with Pete were wonderful years. He was a very good person and a happy person. He was always happy. <laughs> he loved to cook Filipino food. He loved gardening. In 1992, Pete Velasco was diagnosed with cancer. The medications were hard for him to bear, but it wasn't hard for me to help him. I was there for him, to help him in whatever way he needed. I kept a journal of Peter's condition, and every day I wrote how he was feeling, what he needed, where he needed to go. I took him to his doctor visits. I took him to any place he wanted to go. If he wanted to go shopping in the mall, we got in the car and went to the mall and I didn't want him to have to go to a hospital unless he had to. But as things got worse, he had to go to the hospital. And that's where he died. 
We tried to make life happy as best we could. I'll be 80 in October, and uh, it's just been a wonderful life. I'm glad God helped me. Hi, Mom. Hello. Hello. Leo Duran has family back in the Philippines. He stays in touch as best he can. The day that I put in my vacation, I told my boss, I'm going to finish all my work. And then after that, I'm going to go visit my dad. And that day when I went home, it, I was getting ready to go to work. Actually, my second job, which is my part-time job, and I received a text message from my niece that um, dad was gone. Leo's mother is now ill, and though he has brothers and sisters back home to help, Leo is the chief caregiver. So you're not forgetting to take your medicines? I really did not think of the word caregiver when I started helping my parents. Caregiving to me is not just sending them money. It's not just sending them to the best hospital. Caregiving to me is the love, the support, and the understanding that you have to go through. Every day, the pressure of it every day. It's hard for them to understand things that I do here and the distance that I'm dealing with, the time that I have to wake up here, the time that I have to go work. If I don't communicate to them as fast as they wanted it to be, they get frustrated and I understand that. But it's also difficult for me to manage all the time and that effort here. I have plans to see my mom in a few months. That's my dad's birthday, first birthday that he's not with us anymore. If I could turn back that time, I would. I should have seen him before he passed away. And I blame myself for that. My opinion will always have guilt. There will always be guilt in there that says, I could have done something better. I didn't know about this, or I should have, I would have, could have. Thinking as a military guy, I would have at least gotten to my, to my family and said, hey, let's start planning here. But we didn't do that. We just basically said, holy, oh my gosh. Uh, what are we going to do now? I can't say that I should have not left the Philippines because this is a big opportunity for me to come here, work here. But it's hurting me when... I can't be there when I need to. Talk to you soon, Mom. It's very good to hear from my mom to tell me, Mahal kita, which is, I love you. I love to hear it when she says, I love you too. I love my family. Sometimes it's drama. Who doesn't have one in the family? But to be able to take care of my mom, when I can, is the best experience that I have. I did not consider it a burden to take care of Pete. I did it with love. And he knew that he was safe with me. He didn't have to worry. There's no cookie cutter approach to caregiving. But I think there's gotta be a, just a family conversation. Mom and dad, we love you, we care about you. How are we going to do this?